one battlegrounds. We hit the blaze of Arena, Honolulu, Hawaii. X1 World Events giving you Battlegrounds 4. First preliminary match of the night, ladies and gentlemen, Gene Vino Gregory. His opponents, Peter Placido. Welcome to the Blaze Dell Arena X1 Battlegrounds. We've got two preliminary matches going on. Uh, before we bring you to the actual Battlegrounds 4, we've got two fighters. Who do we got in the ring right now? Peter Placido from uh, Bulls Pen versus Gene. Vino Gregory from Mixed Breed. Now, what do you know about these two fighters? Um, Gene Gregory comes in with a 1-1 pro record, but he did win um, his first amateur fight. It's always great. It's always great to watch. Uh, I mean, these guys. Is this their? Uh, they get a lot of experience so far. These two. Kind of up and coming fighters. Uh, yeah. Fortunately, his loss. Gene Gregory's loss was against uh, a stud in Marcus Show. We're going to see later on tonight. Mm. And of course, always great to see. Uh, not necessarily new fighters, but up-and-coming fighters because a lot of times they have nothing, you know, nothing to lose but everything to prove. Exactly, and they come out balls on. You see? Yeah. I mean, they will, they will try everything they've learned from, from striking to submission to... All right, welcome to the Blaze Zell Arena right here in Honolulu, Hawaii. We have uh, the X1 Battlegrounds 4. My name is McCunny. I'll be sitting in next to my good friend. Mike Anzuka here. And me and Mike will be uh, taking you through uh, X1 Battlegrounds 4. We've got a lot of great fighters, actually, in the lineup. Yeah, great matches coming up. Uh, Mark Moreno's fighting Eddie Yagen, who's kind of coming back from a little layoff there, um, kind of staying busy. Marco Shiro, uh, Bryson Kamaku actually just fought last night. Incredible. Unreal. So, I mean, already we're in this, uh, our first round. It's a preliminary match. Two new fighters, up-and-coming fighters. But like I said earlier, you got to love it because these guys will go uh, just balls out and, and uh, try everything they possibly can and they win. Just pounding. Full monitor position here. <laughs> it's always got to be a good thing to be, you know, up and coming fighter. You just, and a lot of times what's hard is, uh, is they want to go so 100%. Sometimes they'll, they'll get tired, but these guys look like they're in shape. Yeah, definitely. Great, great share of both guys. They've been going kind of hard for the whole yeah. round here. And, um, you know, so they still got a lot left in their gas tank. Scheduled for uh, how many minute rounds in this preliminary? We have two three minute rounds, and this is the 155 pound weight class amateur MMA bout again. Great positioning here on top. Nice mount. Again, X1 World Events putting together a, a great lineup of uh, the world's top mixed martial artists, and of course, a lot of the fighters out of Hawaii. End of our first round. So understand that uh, at last check, I heard I heard a rumor that per capita, Hawaii Hawaii fans, uh, mixed martial arts fans, uh, love it, it's Hawaii fighters at the per capita. There's more more fans that love mixed martial arts uh, than anywhere else. Oh, definitely. We have so much events now here. This is turning into the mecca. Um, probably more consistent than even California, where mm -hmm. um, they've been kind of getting a lot of good shows. Vegas, of course, UFC kind of dominates that, but. Um, Hawaii, as far as you know, amount of fighters for how much people we have exactly. here, exactly insane. It's it's you, you always hear the buzz on the street if the, if there's an upcoming event, an upcoming fight. Uh, Hawaii fans, of course, always going to show up. And of course, we've got Peter Placido in the uh, black trunks, and Gene Bino Gregory in the uh, navy blue. Going right into their second round. Of course, the first one, you can tell they felt each other out. They kind of know what's going on, so now they kind of see what else can happen. Yeah, we'll see what they um, start testing their stand-up here. Ooh, nice, nice right hand there, sneaks in. Both players kind of measuring their distance here. First one, they kind of went balls all they got a good test they pretty sure well match as far as upper body clinching um, you know that a lot of ground work there but um, I'll say I guess I'm going to stand up and find out who this 
striker is, who the grappler is. Kind of held this whole, the majority of the first round in the same position mm -hmm. here. Excellent mount. You know, had a hard time getting away and getting uh, out of this mount. He basically had no answer getting out of this mount. So we'll see how long he can last here. A lot of time left. It was an armbar attempt. A little sloppy. Couldn't, couldn't finish it off. Nice takedown again. Nice. Of course, he's Ooh, the little guillotine really here. Guillotine going. He's got a ten-finger guillotine. He has to drop his shoulder. Shoulder drop nice and pretty I mean, solid. All they need to do is like use it legs, keep pressure. Just the, the cranking of the neck again. Not only the, uh, the submission of, of the, the throat, but... You see the neck just straining the neck right just straining. It's, it's one of the two. It's one of those moves that... Yeah, the problem is that this, this ten finger guillotine all depends on your grip. So if you have the wrong grip, you have basically no pressure on the guy's neck. And so uh, Gene uh, Gregory would, he'd actually be uh, using more of his energy trying to hold it. Exactly, exactly. And you can kind of see his, his two palms, mm. so that kind of tells me he didn't have the correct grip. He had mm. a normal guillotine grip, which is not good for that ten finger guillotine. It's just a, you know, hands inside. Oh, going for the body. No, no. Plus was trying to pan back here. Excellent first fight. I mean, if, if this is uh, the uh, what we're going to witness throughout the night, X1 World Events, this is the Battlegrounds 4, our preliminary fight. We got a couple of them. This is the uh, first one coming by way of the 155 pound weight class. Takes us to the end of that. Uh, Here's that guillotine right there, locked in. It does look like he had just a normal grip. You know, kind of get a little peak of the the, um, the grip right there. You have to modify that grip. And he's putting strain in the neck, but what happens is he just kind of torques the neck backwards. How about a round of applause for these two fighters, ladies and gentlemen. Preliminary match, welcome to X1 Battlegrounds. Our first fight of the night. If this is set precedence for the fights tonight, man, I'm going to find out. Right, another round of applause. These fighters, our first fight of the night, X1 Battlegrounds. Ladies and gentlemen, a round of applause. For our winner tonight, by unanimous decision, out of the blue corner, Peter Bastido. And ladies and gentlemen, taking on Thomas, fighting out of HMC, has about a round of applause for Nicholas Agricola. This fight scheduled for two three-minute rounds in the 260-pound division. Second preliminary fight of the night. This is X1 Battleground. Got right, Thomas Ferguson in the red here. And team Devastation. Two big boys here. Nicholas. Agri Ag Agricola from HMC. Looks like both guys are making their debuts here. Oh, kind of a bad little takedown there. Looks like he's gonna pay for it, but he's gonna go for our leg. Looks like a leg lock position here, but he can't really turn him over. Bad position to be kind of messing around with the legs. Ooh, reverse naked. Trying to, that is back. Wow. Oh, that was quick. Oh, there it is. I think I have to do a double tap on that one. <laughs> Again, our second preliminary match of the night, Exxon World Events, before we take you into the official battlegrounds. Of course, our big boys in the 260-pound division. Went over 51 seconds in round number one here. Here comes the two guys kind of blasting kind of a takedown here. Kind of missed it, but he just kind of fell down. Probably a bad move. Agricola kind of went after him, pounding, even if um, Ferguson went after his leg. Looks like a decent footlock position, just didn't try to finish it here. Kind of paid for it. 
eventually got his back. Taking a lot of punishment there. Curling up instead of going after that leg. Gave his back. Jumped right in. Got the rear naked underneath. Locked in on. He didn't have that hook, but he didn't really need it. It's kind of locked in. Put a lot of pressure. Hold on. And there's that tap right. There it is. The tap right there. Referee initially didn't see it. Of course, give a round of applause by rear naked Cho Thomas out of the blue corner. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome, fighting out of the blue corner, Donald Gonzalez. In the 140 pound division, David Balikau. David Balikau, David Gonzalez, Donald Gonzalez, excuse me, from Young Guns de Luta from um, the Big Island. Both guys known as good stand up guys, especially Balikau. He's got a killer little sidekick he uses, very, very lightning with his hands as well. Should be interesting. So, again, if you're joining us, we're here at X1's at the Blaisdell Arena, Honolulu, Hawaii. Uh, X1 World Events Battlegrounds, our third preliminary match of the night. So got some great fights coming up. Unbelievable. Some fighters that uh, took some leave and they're back in the ring. This is, of course, in our 140 pound division XMA match. Basically, stand up kickboxing with the small gloves makes it a lot more exciting especially these guys are real powerful punchers and kickers this is a kind of kind of a match you almost uh, love to watch because uh, it's a lot of striking a lot of kicking that guarantees action you know two great stand-up guys small gloves and what, what, what's it like training of course uh, regular kickboxing these guys are kickboxers of course training with regular uh, kickboxing gloves and now they have the uh, of course the MMA gloves I think it makes a huge difference because some guys are real good at using the gloves, which is a lot bigger as their defensive mm -hmm. um, mode. So without the big gloves there, it's a lot harder for them to be a little more defensive. Mm -hmm. You know, they have to rely more on their, their bobbing, their weaving, their movement, whereas, um, you know, they can kind of stand there and um, use those gloves for additional um, protection. Or area protection. It's kind of interesting that um, Balikal's not the aggressor. He's always kind of pushing mm -hmm. the fight here because Usually in his fights, Valikawa is definitely aggressor. He kind of usually pushes the, the fight. Oh, nice. Left hand there. Definitely a fight you love to watch, man. All striking, all kicking. Valikawa uses a lot of outside positioning, too. Like wide hooks from the outside, he's kicking. Looks like um, Gonzalez is doing a good job at stopping that little side kick that usually uh, Valikawa sets his, his whole game up with. Now, of course, we've seen now with the, with the big uh, onset of MMA, we, a lot of kickboxers going into the MMA arena. Yeah, this is definitely like a way of kind of bringing themselves in two legitimate, solid kickboxers with MMA. Here's that little low ball we just experienced here. Let's see what happens here. Uh, uh, I don't want to see it. <laughs> Got the toe, got the toenail, got you know. Maybe uh, <laughs> Any, all it takes is a graze, huh? <laughs> Any part of that cup that you hit. Maybe yeah, he, he thought about hitting it. <laughs> that's all it takes. <laughs> it was there was like that gap between between the actual pain and, and the brain, and it's like, yep, you know, it was close enough. It it's could gonna, have been up to like yes. ten seconds ago, and it just kind of kicked in. Close enough to hurt. Close enough to hurt. And normally, uh, for if you get kicked in the nuts and the jewels, um, the referee see that they usually referee is. Um, Unless it's like a blatant mm -hmm. where he's not going to, you know, he doesn't see anything. He's going to give the fighter a chance to recover up to five minutes. Now, how, how many times, of course, uh, you talked about blatantly and then, on, you know, you don't do it on purpose, but uh, how many times would he have to get a groin shot to minus points? Um, it all depends on the referee's discretion. Okay. So if it looks like legitimate, um, then obviously it may come after the first one, you know. Mm -hmm. But um, like a little graze, that might have been it right there. I don't know. Let's see. That was one kick. I was kind of like in that area now. I must have been on it. Both guys measuring themselves. These two fighters obviously know each other. I mean, as, as far as styles, and you could just see, you know, like you said earlier, kind of hesitant. He's usually the aggressor. Yeah, definitely. It's kind of interesting to see. Gonzalez is kind of a, looks like a straightforward, more um, traditional kickboxer. But I like how he's a, um, kind of a more traditional martial arts type of background in his style. He does a lot of side kicks, 
um, you know, punches from outside, but an excellent kickboxer, and he kind of throws guys off with that outside style because it's difficult to kind of come in mm -hmm. when you're always, like, looking for a, you know, you can get hit with those hooks from the outside. Heading into our second round, our third preliminary match of the night for the X1 World Events Battlegrounds. This is an XMA match, which consists, of course, uh, like you said, Chris, of uh, a lot of striking, kicking, no... I mean, here we go. Looks like Gonzalez is going to push the fight right here. Oh, nice. Right hand. So Balakov's kind of picking his punches too. Oh. oh nice. Ooh. Just missed. Put everything in that one. Exchanged. That definitely looked like a cleaner kick to the nuts right there. Nice left hand there by Polycal. Both fighters can measure himself. Gavala is kind of switching his stance as well. Oh, nice flying knee right there. Not sure if Gonzalo kind of gassed himself out a little bit. He's kind of slowing down. Or is Balakal's mouth going to be a more aggressive? Mouth opening a little bit. Nostrils getting bigger. <laughs> now, so X1 World Events uh, giving us a great lineup coming up soon. And as we get into the battlegrounds for our third preliminary match, these guys going to have some great preliminary matches so far. Yeah, definitely. Well matched. Um, good action. But these XMA Get matches are definitely a crowd pleaser. Especially guys as talented as these two. Little accurate punch by Balikal. Again, scheduled for three two minute rounds for this XMA match. Oh, nice. Oh, a favor. These guys almost, I mean, the, the accuracy, these guys, it, it looks as though they're just, they're just wailing, but they, they know where they're throwing, they know where they want to throw. We gotta love it, uh, you guys keeping Hawaii fans and the world fans updated on, on mixed martial arts, especially out of Hawaii, uh, on Zuka.com. Yeah, we're looking at the, a lot of, we had a lot of hits, and a lot of guys kind of relying on us coming over here, so, you know, definitely cover all the events, make sure everybody's updated, notify everybody, make sure that, uh, you know, try to get as much guys to these events. Yeah, nice exchange of both fighters guys, here. And they know oh. it's the third round. Yep. These guys are trying to measure. Both guys, excellent. Finding their position, finding their measurement. Two rounds of measuring each other up, and it, it's all striking and kicking from here. Yep. And just the, the accuracy. I mean, these guys, you know, like that. Of course, you know, it's a miss, but he knows where he's going. He's, he knows what he wants to do. Great to watch uh, uh, kickboxers and you know slowly move into the MMA world. Come on, boy! Gotta put points up now, Donald. One more tomorrow. And up. Get in there, Dad. Nice little right leg kick there. Go to the guts! Go to the guts! Go to the guts, Donald! One more to the guts! Usually with the uh, orthodox versus um, southpaw, you know the straight punches are the ones that kind of count, you know. Mm -hmm. And the uh, Balakov's row real good is left, straight left. Let's go deep. You know, Gonzalez needs to step, keep his left foot outside and keep throwing that straight right, but not really doing that too much here. Oh, nice little running man punch, but Bonica answers with a left hand to the head. Balika looks like a little more um, confident staying in there. Coming down to the last few seconds, third round. Three two-minute rounds. These guys going at it. Nice move of Balikal there. takes us to our final preliminary match, X1 World Events, the Battlegrounds 4 right here at Honolulu, Hawaii, Blaisdell Arena. We're going to go ahead and uh, find out uh, who took this match. Here's the both guys exchanging here, both finding, trying to find their range. Nothing really landing too much. Oh, nice. Gonzalez left and right hand. 
So Gonzalo got the better of that exchange. Taking his home, fighting out of the blue corner, David Balikau. Fighting out of Bulls pen, Marcus Moreno. Please welcome to the battleground, Alika Rincon. Aloha, we'd like to welcome you to the Blazer Arena right here. Honolulu, Hawaii. Welcome to X1 World Events Battleground 4. My name is McCutty, sitting alongside my good friend Mike Anzuka. And we are taking it right to the Battlegrounds again. X1 World Events, putting together a great event. Definitely, we have Mark Moreno, Marcus Moreno, actually, from Bulls Pen. One of the many Morenos that have in the fight for Bulls Pen. Against Alika Rikon from a young guns in Luto of, again, of the Big Island. Marcus Moreno coming in with a 1 and 2 pro, 1 and 2 amateur record. Alika Rincon, 0 1 and 1, his record. Moreno say he drives in, but uh, Rincon has a guillotine on him and the underhook. See if he can kind of make something out of it here. We're just kind of bowling him in. So, this is our first official Battlegrounds 4 fight of the night. Marcus Moreno coming off of a decision win over Hugh Jones in Extreme Wars Battleground to Old Lounge 1. So, it's been a while since he fought. Liko Rincon came off of a loss. So from Akua Hanaiki of, uh, in the Ultimate Warriors Combat 1 in December of 2005. Uh, it's, it's great to see a lot of these local fighters, I mean, they will go out and, and they will look for uh, organizations to fight in, so they get a lot of ring experience. Yeah, they, definitely. There's so much now organizations out there for them to kind of gain experience. You know, we're seeing a well-balanced, experienced fighters coming up, and now we can kind of see guys who actually legitimately match up well so they can develop their skills against each other, which is... Very, very important for the support to grow. Oh. Moreno slips to the back. Let's see if he can make something out of it. Oh, okay, here. Let me jump to the back and try to get that second hook. Kind of a little risky position here. Ring on controlling that, that grip. Moreno's got double underhooks here. Should... Oh, Rincon did a good job of getting back in a neutral position. Spending some time in the corner, trying to figure out, a lot of times waiting to see who's going who's gonna to make the mistake or who's going to be the aggressor. They don't definitely call this a neutral position for anything. It's kind of a, you know, guys are good at clinches and knees, can kind of make a good advantage of this position. A lot of guys you see kind of a muscle stalling in a position where guys kind of rest. That position, I, I always tend to think of, think of the uh, the ref uh, in the ring because, you know, of course, you, you get the crowd thinking it's a stalemate. You get the crowd thinking, okay, split him up, stand him up. But he can see, you know, who's who the aggressor or who's going to do what. Always, always a hard job. Always said, a hard job. Just as you said that, you know, John Kukiko, our referee, did a great job of spreading the fighters out. Trying to keep the fight, the action here. Water. Keep them moving. Let the fighters kind of try something. Here's that clinch. Nico Rincon is raining in some um, knees right there. Great double under position, but Marcus Moreno did a good job at keeping those, those elbows together underneath. Again, Rincon aggressive with those knees. So again, if you are joining us, welcome to the Blazel Arena. X1 World Events giving you Battlegrounds 4. Now, a uh, fairly, fairly new organization uh, to the MMA world, but already, I mean, putting together some great events. I mean, f getting fighters from around the world, a lot of the local boys, a lot of the top local fighters, and of course, always giving a venue to up-and-coming fighters. Definitely. I agree. We have a uh, good match coming up that we're, I'm really looking forward to. Cleo Kwan of Eastside versus Lauren Ishimini, Brazilian mm -hmm. yes. freestyle. Both two studs, mate. Wrestling versus uh, stand up right here, and we'll see. And MMA, you know, you know what's going to happen. That may be the fight of the night. We're, we're looking at a pretty good matchup, another well matched up fight. Ooh, another groin shot there. It's the night of the jewels, huh? damage that's, to the jewels here. That's the one. It's, it's, this is that, uh, that time you got to make sure that you check. Uh, I remember a, a past event. Let's see what happens. Uh, 
clinch. Oh, nice and clean. Of course, always hard. You get the double, double underhooks, and you know you, just, you you think you're going for the thigh, and you know, or even the belly. And he's Hukans actually does a good job. He's throwing those knees, you know, to the to the midsection like how he's doing now. You know, one little half step forward and change the whole dynamics of that knee. <laughs> there goes there goes your voice. <laughs> Was a good position here, got a trap in that elbow. Nice, nice little knee trip down. there. That's right, the half guard. See if Morano can make the best little, oh, nice little roll there. Yeah. Uh -huh. on top, and have to get the position, see if he can make most of this as well. Morano trapping those arms. Back to close guard. Rose doing a good job of kind of tying up those hands. Goes for a double. Goes for a double arm lock right there. Bring it up. Trying to bring it up. Just get those hips out. There it is. Oh, he's he's got it. Oh. Good job, Eric, of pulling out the right time. Now, a lot of times you see this position. Um, what would the, like? What would you think? Would you would you as a fighter let let the guy up or just? I mean, you know. Yeah, I think it all depends on your your style. Mm -hmm. uh, I think if the guy's more of a ground and pound or you know, he's, he's finding more success in the ground, I wouldn't mm -hmm. let the guy up. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So okay. keep the guy down, maybe punish his legs a little bit so he doesn't have as much in case he has to scramble. Uh, a lot of guys like to damage the legs here. But he has to be smart with those arms because um, Morel's kind of getting a little close to those that arm bar, getting over the shoulder. He's going to try to kick that hips out. Maybe go after that arm again. He's actually doing pretty good at, at getting pretty close here. Maybe he should just keep on being aggressive with that arm. He might be able to pull it off. So it's it's one of those one of those submission moves that you you just fully got to commit once you once you get into it. Yeah, definitely. And if he gets over the shoulder, he's halfway there. You know, mm -hmm. if you can lock your shoulder and relock your guard over the shoulder. It's different for the guy to pull out his arm as well as back up. Bad position for Moreno right here. Good sprawl by Raycon. Body leaks! Body leaks! 15 seconds leaks! 15 seconds leaks! Body This is a tiring position right here for Moreno, too. That guy's got a good sprawl. Kind of punishing him on top. He's carrying the weight. So again, we are scheduled for three three-minute rounds. Our first official Battlegrounds fight of the night. Go back to the replay. Here's that half guard Morano had. Kind of locked it up. Just kind of like a hip heist, a bump and roll right there to get to the top. Good timing, good positioning. He kind of made the most of it. Was able to keep the top for the most, the rest of the match. I believe our third and final round of this uh, first fight of the night. X1 Battlegrounds, first official fight. These three threes are great. Um, you know, it's good for the, the um, up and coming guys. They get three rounds, not a lot of um, decision, or not a lot of draws, actually. And these guys can kind of go balls off for three minutes, and, um, you know, because three fives is a long time for the guys. And, you know, the, the legitimate top-end pros, mm -hmm. they get tired at three, you know, at three fives, so. Now, does it, does it uh, kind of depend on the organization, on, on the times and rounds? and? Exactly, yeah. Uh, they pretty much have their own, you know, choosing right. of what, what kind of what they want right. to do. But I think these three threes are great, unless mm -hmm. you're like high level, A class caliber fighters, you know. That's the guy's getting a lot of work. So keep a fast pace. They're going to try for the double leg, but Nico's doing a good job. He can that underhook there. Keeping those legs spread to sprawl. Difficult to kind of pull them in. A little stalemate position here. See the fight. Nice little nice. adjustment there by uh, Moreno. Sucks in the hips and takes them down. Now, a lot of times people wonder when the when the points are given for, for a takedown. When when are the points given? Is it is it the, the hips down? For, as far as the takedown goes, uh, actually, I tell you, the takedowns is more of an avenue, mm -hmm. so a nice little 
Exchange. Flurry there by Rincon, but you take takedowns is an avenue for Grom Dominic. It's not necessarily mean that the guy's gonna win the round. And right. I think a lot of guys get confused with that. You know, like they think that a guy takes him down, but he doesn't do anything on right. the round. He shouldn't win the round if the guy's kind of damaging him standing mm. up. It's all about damage, and it comes down to this is a fight. You know, who's gonna end the fight? Who's closer to the end of the fight? Nice, nice takedown. Take So far, we'll see. Listening to his round, you can hear his round saying he needs to step it up. He needs to step it up. Yeah, he definitely is. Huge takedown. Trying to stay busy in that guard there. Again, some of the, the rounds that are uh, you know, kind of well balanced where a guy's kind of exchange a little bit, one guy has a takedown. Sometimes takedowns is an advantage if nothing else happens. But the guy kind of takes down again, but the other guy's aggressive from the guard. You know, if yeah. he's aggressive from the guard, almost pulled off of the submissions, he could steal the fight even if he gets taken down. Just by looking, a lot of, of course, it's human nature to take if you're on, on top, in a, you know, but I've seen a lot of fights where guys on the ground, you know, like you, you see them earlier trying to, trying to throw in the arm bar. Yeah. Definitely. Now, and that's why it's important to have educated judges about the ground as well. You know, be able to see what is legitimate it, submissions. The guy's on top throwing some punches, but. You know, if you look, a lot of these punches right here is not landing. Mm. Morales doing a great job at kind of um, defending and staying away from them. But. The, the beauty of, of mixed martial arts is that no matter if you're on your back, you can still take the uh, fight. Again, our first official fight of the night, X1 World Events Battlegrounds. Let's go back to the replay, and then we're going to find out what the judges think. It's an exchange by Rincon. Looking for a space. Morales just kind of covering up. Huge takedown in this last round. I think it's coming up. Break off, finishing from the ground here. Finishing strong with a ground and pound. All right, another round of applause. Thank you for joining us on the Lulu X1 World Events Battlegrounds. The judges score this a unanimous decision, fighting out of the red corner from Hilo Young Guns, Alika Rincon. El Gallego Negro, Lorenzo Moreno. Dirty Dave Moreno. We go Moreno, another Moreno from the Bulls pen here. Moreno's the, the name of the night. Yeah, I mean, uh, another Moreno. Now, are these Morenos all related or? I believe they are, from the Bulls pen at least. Mm -hmm. um, I hope they're not finding their cousin in uh, Dirty Dave Moreno here. You know, it's it's as soon as you know we, you see that you see the fight, you're thinking Morenos are fighting the Moreno. Nice arm lock position right there, but Lorenzo Moreno. We're gonna have to go by first. We names have for to this. go by first names for this one. <laughs> Again, if you're joining us, welcome to the Blazedale Arena, Honolulu, Hawaii. X1 World Events, we're bringing you battlegrounds for our second official fight of the night. Two Morenos going at it. It is uh, myself, McCunny, and my good friend, Mike Anzuka. We got Lorenzo from the Bulls pin on top here. Nice little ex exchange. Dirty Dave kind of came out really amped up as he ran into the fight, ran into the ring here. So we've got Dirty Dave and what they call Lorenzo, El Gallego Negro. Translation? <laughs> Some Brazilian thing. <laughs> and I won't say anything more. <laughs> <laughs> nice little chain exchange right there by um, Dirty Dave. He's on top of the mountain. Nice full. I mean, nice. Almost a little bit too high. What do you say? Actually, this is actually a good position. The higher he is, away is from it? the hips okay. of it. So when he bumps and he rolls, yeah, he right. can't push it off. But he's got to worry about those legs. Lorenzo's such a long guy, he gets those legs under hook, and he kind of cry the, you know, peel the guy right off him. That's what he's trying to do right here. Again, the beauty of mixed martial arts, you think if, if, if he's riding too high, it's a bad position, and it comes down to if, if the fighters, you know, some fighters got long torsos, so they can, and long legs. Yeah, both of these guys actually do have long nice. legs. Long torsos here. Elbow to the forehead. Of course, trying to uh, create some space so he can do his ground and pound. Nice job by Dirty Dave right here, keeping him out. This is actually the position where I advertise, you know, Dave can hit Lorenzo, it's very difficult for, I mean, yeah, Dave can hit Lorenzo, Lorenzo has a hard time 
you know, hitting him. He's setting up an armbar right oh, here. There's the next. Oh, it's not trying to straighten him out here. Deep. I mean, he went for a full flex on that one. It, it just went backwards. He's doing a good and, job of turning that, that wrist a little bit to kind of get out. Might have got a arm pop right there, yeah. unless he turned it a little before that. Got some blood. Got some blood off of uh, Lorenzo. Lorenzo calling him up for stand-up battle. And I think blood coming from the eye of the nose, but it seems to be affecting his uh, vision. Vision in the uh, right eye. You see it there, kind of squinting. Not sure if he got hit. Under the first round. An unbelievable arm bar. I mean, he, you could you see it flexed backwards. And, of course, a great job in reversing it. Might have busted his nose right there. We come back here. Is the mount position. Lorenzo kind of takes a chance. Nice arm right here. <laughs> you see the elbow kind of turn out. If he turns his thumb up, it allows his uh, elbow to kind of bend the right way. And what happened is Dave didn't go after his wrist to correct that arm to so the turn. Gave Lorenzo a chance to stand, you know, get to the top position. Try to set it up again. I think that uh, the blood came from this elbow. There it is. There it is. Huge elbow right there. Looks like it was just above the eye, but maybe they hit him in the nose. Of course, it, uh, you see it towards the end of that match affecting his... His right eye. They're kind of determining if they can actually see out of that eye. And father's complaining, but and I, of, of course you can see it towards the end of the match, uh, just squinting and, and, and trying. Just got the official word from the um, referee. Looks like he might have a cor corneal scratch. It's kind of scratch on the eye itself, having difficulty for him to see. So we're gonna call this fight right here. Fighter safety always paramount and it's kind of important, especially the eyes. You know, they won't even take a chance. If right, another round of applause for these fighters. Point of scratch. This one's by uh, Dr. Stoppage. Uh, accidental poke to the eye, scratch the cornea. So, ladies and gentlemen, please give our fighters a round of applause. Sometimes that's what happens in mixed martial arts. Ladies and gentlemen, Kaleo Juan. Please welcome Lauren Ishimine. This fight right here is probably the fight of the night on paper. Cleo Kwan versus Eastside is a great stand-up guy. Lauren Ishimine from Brazilian Freestyle, an excellent wrestler. I just had the pleasure of watching Lauren Ishimine kind of roll over a bunch of guys, hit some wars in a, a Maui tournament, in Brazilian just a tournament that he actually won first place in. Now this is this is going to be an exciting fight. I mean, a, a lot of uh, MMA fans and fighters themselves have, have been anticipating this fight. Yep, we'll see if... Uh, well, Kwan's, the, the big question is, he's always going to have a hard time stopping guys from taking him down. And uh, Ishmael is an excellent um, takedown artist. We'll see if, nice single leg right here. Let's see if Cleo can stop the takedown. Nice wizard by Cleo Kwan. Good job at pressing him in, pressing him into the ropes. Cleo has to keep himself up. Good job by Cleo, keeping his... His base underneath him, get him right up. Nice wizard. I mean, kind of keeping with that body lock and clinch. Of course, we've got uh, Oahu fighter taking on a uh, Maui fighter. Two local boys. See if Ishimini can kind of um, work his ground and palm from this position right here. He needs to try to pass half butterflies. So gets his guard back on. Referee pulls him back in the center here, tries to restart him. Of course, two great experienced fighters. I mean, of course, when you come into a match with two fighters, first round pretty much trying to feel each other out. But this is but exactly where Ishimin wants to be, on the ground on top. You know, insisted on that takedown. Let's see um, what can Cloak can do from right here. He just came up with a, a big win over Marshall Harvest and a hard-fought victory mm. in Icon Sport 46. Well, do you think, you know, just last month, in fact, a few weeks ago. Ishimini came off of a win from Bronson de Lima, War in the Valley Isle 2 in March. Great to see. I mean, we got a lot of fighters, uh, you know, a lot of coming out of Oahu, but it's great to see now Maui fighters. Of course, we see all the Hilo fighters. There's also a lot of guys in Kauai, so mm -hmm. French, a lot of the, the major islands here are um, well represented with quality fighters. Makes for like interesting matcha, mm -hmm. matchups as well. Great bragging rights when it comes down to uh, Hawaii. This, I think it's a beauty of Hawaii, yet we're, we're one, but we have so many, you know, eight different islands. 
So of course, you know, it's it's always audiences. You know, they're gonna they're gonna choose somebody. It comes down to the town you're from, the same island, a different island. Nice triangle yeah, yeah, yeah. position. Good job by Lauren. Slipping by and on the cross side. Try to punish Kaleo right here. Not landing two big blows. Kaleo's defense is very, very good on the ground. And Lauren's such a dominating wrestler here. He's gonna, it's going to be difficult for Kaleo to kind of get up. A little aggressive with that mount there. Kaleo doing a good job keeping that knee up nice and high. Both, both fighters, you gotta let they're both working hard. Like you said, Khalil's got great defense on the ground. Good guard and recovery as well. But exactly how Ishimin wants to have it. Ground and pound him, take down, control the round. Don't let Khalil get those dangerous hands, you know, let those dangerous hands go. Let's see this, uh, some action in the first round. Good job by, by Ishimin as well, trying to throw something that kind of get Khalil thinking he's gonna, you know, land a punch. Goes in for that single leg with the hook, but Claude did a great job with that great. that whizzer and underhook. And at the end, he got passed. Keeping inside position, trying to soften him with some knees. Great to watch these guys. I like, you know, some the technique. Of, of course, shot for the single leg, perfect. But of course, Kaleo backing it up with the whizzer. It's just yeah, good matchup. And um, you know, that always was Kaleo's downfall. He's actually getting a lot better at takedown mm -hmm. defense. He always was like, if he didn't hit you coming in, then he'd be in trouble on the ground. But um, you know, you see that first um, little takedown attempt. Claude actually did a good job at preventing the takedown from Lauren, although he did get it. And of course, a great match if, if you're a mixed martial arts fan. You always have that, always wonder, you know, it's, is it a striker? Is it a grappler? What what dominates? And this is uh... Definitely, who can bring him into their world? Claude, if he wants to have to land some hands and hopefully hurt Lauren before he comes in and shoot that takedown again. Oh, nice little left hand by <laughs> Claude to drop Lauren, but just insists with that takedown. Sinks it in. Claude did a good job at kind of taking off the rope. Oh, Claude, circle Claude, and get away. Take you down. Great job. And then, like, talking about sucking them into their world, I mean. Little underhook of the rope there, good strategy. <laughs> by That's, if if by the Claude. ref can't see it, yeah. <laughs> you do. ain't cheating yeah, if yeah. you don't get caught. <laughs> You don't, you know, just do it. Do it till he grabs your hand. Yeah. Again, it's that single leg to lift the leg up. Again, you can you can just see the the, the wrestling skills of, of Lauren. Yeah, trying to get a single leg, but Claude doing a good job. Looking for that Great cross counter. face. Wizard, he needs to kind of put a little more pressure on that cross to get Lauren's head away. Lauren's gonna try to suck him in for a double. Looks like he's got his hands clenched. He's gonna try, should be able to pull him right in and take him down. Yeah. Claude did a good job of getting those hips in, those legs back. Great yeah, job by Claude here. Cross. Perfect technique. I mean, this is textbook. Right? This is what you practice for. This is, you know, you're in that up against the wall. You're in that corner. Sinking your cross face. Good hips in, legs out. Pummeling in. Does it get that left hand on the same side that his legs on in that left side? Trying to elevate that head. There it is. Great. Good job by Claude Kwanya. Of course, it looks like they weren't doing much, but I mean, working, squeezing, cross facing. Claude's punishing with the mm -hmm. hits. Doesn't look like, oh, it's a hard throw. Oh. We'll see, going off his back. It's not <laughs> where he wants to be, especially at Claude, a guy with his kicking power. You see Kaleo's corner going, what are you doing? Pound him. Kick him. Oh. oh, nice little leg yeah. trip there. The technique, these guys, the technique these guys have, I mean, just blow for blow, exchange for exchange. I mean, as soon as we, as soon as we get into what someone's doing, Kaleo's doing something, then Lauren counters and, you know, great, great job, fight. Right there. Great job, Kaleo. Nice. Nice job at keeping those underhooks. Now, Cleo, now that he's got that takedown defense working, now he's got to work and see if he can kind of land some blows. Because sometimes if you're too defensive, then he can't use his, his striking skills. And once you start getting more aggressive with the striking, then he may open up takedowns for Lauren again. So, definitely a chess match. Always things to think about. Like, you know, the, like I said, I'm going to say that. Oh, and my he right nice there sneaks in by Lauren Shimini. 
for, of course, for a guy his height and knee. That's huge elevation. <laughs> huge elevation. Especially for the guy. His, his thighs, the thighs on the guy. He's got like you know? tree trunks, his legs. <laughs> what, a, what a base he's got it. Let's see that knee. I mean, that absolutely high. Nice position here. I mean, Lauren, Lauren Ishimini, 5'5". Five, five. Unbelievable. Right on the button. Cleo wasn't used to guys trying to knock his head off in all, all kickboxing matches he did. You know, I might have sent him to the canvas. Lauren kind of took a chance with that um, kind of head and arm throw. Missed it. Nice little leg trip, though, that kind of put Cleo on the back. And of course, uh, like I tell a lot of people, they, they watch and they're in grapplers if you just sat and did some isometrics for about three minutes that's basically what they're going through they're, they're, they're squeezing they're tightening up they're trying to pull something in and of course Khalil still in, in, in good condition from his last fight yeah definitely good last shot there nice finish by uh, Ishimini nice take down of course the, the grappling skills trying to work his way up Cleo doing a good job at uh, recovering his guard. Again, if you are joining us, welcome to the Blaisdell Arena right here in Honolulu, Hawaii. X1 World Events giving you Battlegrounds 4. Some of Hawaii's top mixed martial arts fighters and some mixed martial arts fighters from around the world coming to the Pacific. Good job at the referee, standing you guys up. Again, like we talked about earlier, you know, takedowns are an avenue for gone domination, but if you don't go and try to finish a fight and just try to pepper them, right. then the referee should stand you up. This again is uh, Claire's doing a good job at kind of shutting them down and forcing the referee to stand them up again. Now Claire has to just make, it, make himself work here because if nothing else happens, then again the takedowns come into play. Quickness of Lauren Ishimini, I mean, takedowns, getting back up. Always great to watch Kilo Kwan. He always looks relaxed. Yeah, and he's such a, like, a relaxed tougher guy. He's, he's such a good kickboxer he is. Keeps his hands down. His distancing is, is so good that even the best kickboxers have a hard time hitting him. And what this does, it kind of helps him with the takedown defense because he can keep his hands low. That's how he normally fights even kickboxing. So it works out great for MMA. He has a great chin. His obviously takedown defense is getting good. His guard recovery is excellent as well. So, you know, his, his mixed martial art game is actually coming together really, really nice. Great to see a lot of these, a lot of these fighters. Good to see them, you know, when they first started and, and, and as they continue on and, and go out and, do, and fight in other uh, organizations and they bring it all here. Nice. Nice left hand sneaks in by Shane. Well, Corey talks about that chin. Kalev just kind of shakes it off. But you can, you can tell that Lawrence, he can feel the power of Kaleo. He always has to be worried about possibly getting and taken down. So, you know, a little tentative, but, you know, they're standing up. Right then, again, Kaleo couldn't land any good punches that kind of damaged Lawrence. So, you know, kind of running out of time. Now these takedowns may come in, you know, come in effect as far as the judging. So right, three three-minute rounds for the X1 World Events Battlegrounds. Great fight going on right now. Kaleo Kwan out of the East Siders in Waimanalo, Oahu, and of course taking on Lauren Ishimine, Brazilian freestyle a grappler, also great grappler out of the island of Maui. Drop low for that double leg. Go keep it one under hook. Nice hips in, good arch. Great exchange. That uh, concludes that third and final round between uh, Kaleo Kwan and Lauren Ishimine. We're gonna, this one's going to the judges. Be interesting how the judges match judge these uh this fight right here so land some blows barnes go to takedowns that left hand was a solid straight left hand right there by and then Kalo kind of laughs it off but that was actually a good shot this is where lauren kind of dropped on to get that double Kalo had a good job at keep did a good job by keeping that left arm and the right arm in underhook and trying to land some Ladies another round of applause <laughs> for our fighters in the x1 Maui taking on Oahu. This one went to the judges, and our judges chose a decision. Ladies and gentlemen, the 155-pound weight class fighting out of the red corner, Lauren Ishemine. Fighting out of the 808 Fight Factory, John Chrysostomo from Team Papakolea. 
Chad Guzman. This is a big fight for Chad here. He's a high quality opponent. And it's great, I mean. Nice leg kicks there by John. I mean, these guys just exchange. You, you see. Oh, it's right the cross side. Doesn't matter how long you're out of the ring. I mean, he's he's still kept uh, pretty busy with 808 Fight Factory. Yeah, definitely. He didn't stop training at all. Kind of probably took a little breaks, but he's back. He also has a fight scheduled in Guam as well. Mm -hmm. Of course, uh, always, always kind of hard to see somebody uh, go up against somebody of. of John's caliber. Yeah, you know what I mean, especially a guy who has like one basically an 0 1 record. Mm -hmm. well, we'll see. So far, John doing what uh, is expected. She just stand up. It's a little, you know, Chad being a little bit wild on the, on the stand up. You know, he's smart to kind of go to the ground. <laughs> in the belly. Nice, nice positioning here by Christophe. Uh, oh, here comes the arm bar. Goes for the Kimura. I mean, this looks like practice. Here, oh, back to the straight arm bar. Oh. Nice technique. Okay. Try to cut himself out okay. of it. Uh, Good job by kind of keeping that elbow bent. Holds it on. Oh, right uh, to the triangle. Right nice triangle. Right to the triangle. Let's see if he can walk it in. You see, He's you trying to pull it in, squeeze his knees, pull that head down. The skill still there. Still trying to lock it in nice and tight. Guzman has to do make something happen right now. Sosma can actually kind of keep squeezing from right here. Now he switches to reverse arm lock. You see, he might switch the arm bar again. Grab the underleg. Go. <laughs> nice positioning again. There it is. Uh, there it is. John Chrysostomo, I mean, just in, in uh, I shouldn't say old form. <laughs> Same form. Same form. As Same form. Four years ago. There's John. Nice string of submissions. Goes for like a Kimura type of arm position. Goes straight back to an arm lock. Guzman kind of bumps out. Takes a chance. Bends that arm. Now he's in a safe position here, but John kind of keeps his um, composure. Switches right to a triangle. Went back to an arm bar here to finish. Great string of submissions by John Chrysostomo. Another round of applause for our fighters, ladies and gentlemen. Bring him to the center ring. Of course, you all seen it by Armbar fighting out of the blue corner. Back in mixed martial arts, John Christostomo. Please welcome Dylan Clay. Fighting out of the East Siders Fight Club, Kimo Ubo. Dylan, excellent Brazilian Jiu Jitsu guy, great wrestling ability. Phenomenal. It's a great matchup here. Dylan coming in with a 3-0 pro record. Lost his first amateur bout. Kimo coming in with a 2-2 two two record. Shows some excellent ground as well lately in his fights. Dylan's probably going to look to take down. He has a great single and double leg as well. Here it is. Nice. Line left right to the mouth position. Instructor Home Alone. Parallels from uh, Brazilian Freestyle. Okay, he's trying to set up the arm bar right away. Right Stay into over it. Real quick. Good job by Akimo kind of gutting out of there. Nice speed to the head. Oh. Good front face lock here, punishing him. Again, not, in that position, Kimo is not, you know, it's stuck in the guillotine or, or blocked the head for the knee. Good oh, job, double hook. Well, got double hooks again. And so watch out, he's not too aggressive with the um, submission attempts, trying to get underneath oh. that chin. He was such a strong guy, he has to control that wrist. If he doesn't control that wrist, looks like still pressure with them. Got it. Barely under the, the chin. It's about 140 into the first round, and. Not a good position to be in if you can hold it. Especially with a guy like Dylan. Click. Excellent ground guy. Great. great control. Great hip. You know, hip control on that back. Looking for his opportunity. Great job by Kimo just uh, fending off the rear naked. Yep. Arm control. Exactly what he needs to do here. Dylan's trying to tie up that arm with that leg. 
Well, he's going to try to do this. Good job, Akima slipping. Oh, that's reverse. Nice sweep by Dylan Clay again. This is where Akima was dangerous right here. Give an opportunity to punch. And Dylan has a great guard as well. Akima tags him with that left hand. Huge left hand by Kimo. Almost walks into a triangle. <laughs> Why not just dropping him down? Nice triangle position. Can try to pick him up. Dylan Slay. He's had it locked in. Let's see if he can finish him right here. Got it. <laughs> Squeeze him. Oh, Good man. underhook. Should go back to finishing. He's got it locked in. Again. <laughs> Dylan. Squeeze right here. Dylan going to job. Good job of keeping that leg underneath so Kimo can't get up. He didn't try to finish that triangle. He's got his back again. Kimo uh, fighting out of that one. Action pack first round. Great positioning by um, Dylan Clay. Especially exactly what we expected from this guy. He was excellent. But he didn't finish that triangle. He had the back here. This is where he's trying to go for the mounted position. Gave Kimo a good opportunity to kind of get to the top. Try to make the most of that. Try to land some punches, little double ankle sweep. Kimo did a good job at keeping the top there and then try to start landing some blows. And there's that triangle. Dylan locks it in tight. You know, right here is the finishing position. I'm not sure exactly why he didn't think to just hold on and finish it. Looks like Clint Kimo's in trouble right here. I mean, you gotta get, I mean, Kimo working. Yeah, doesn't get any better than that. His arms across here. It's, it's always great to mix martial arts. I mean, it's a sport that you, you know, you get losses, but you, you get more out of, you know, a lot of times get more out of a loss than, you know, of course, it, it, you, you don't, nobody likes a, a loss, but you take a lot of uh, yeah, There's nothing that. better than a kick in the ass yes. when you're training. You know what you get you lost, do. You know, when you have a loss. So for a guy like Kimo, definitely probably help him out because he's, he's a smart guy, adjusted his game. And you can see him every time he comes out to fight, he gets better and better. So mm. he's kind of taking the knowledge and experience from that loss and kind of turn into a positive thing. It's great to see some of these guys, you know, you first see them, they come out and they just want to brawl, they want to be a street fighter, they want to, you know, and then they, they find out that there's somebody just as talented as them, and then they got to go into the technique and, and go back to the gym and then, and, you know. Yep, put in the time, do the reps. Ooh, nice, nice combinations there, catching Dylan Clay. Catching Kimo, but a nice takedown nice. of the finish. <laughs> He's clean with his finishes too, because he gets right to cross side. Looking for the arm bar again. Steps up for the mount. Oh, what's happening here? Kind of falls out of the ring. Going to restart him down in the center. <laughs> kind of an awkward position at the end, um, you know. Stop there, but still again, you got to give it up to the referees. I mean, it, hard job, hard job to focus only on the fighters. You got two corners yelling at you. He's got his back, his double hook. He needs to probably soften him with some punches here. Oh. Nice. Dylan Clay is looking for the opportunity to kind of keep on attack that neck. Kimo's looking for a quick spin to kind of turn and control those wrists. Look for again for his opportunity to escape. Does it have it in? That's in. Let's see if he can finish it. It's in. Kimo has to try to grab that top hand and pull it out. Oh, he taps him. 57 seconds in round number two. Reverse naked choke. By Dylan Clay. Nice exchanges by Dylan. Straight punches landing. He set up a nice double leg here. Great finish, good position, good posture. Gets right to cross side. And he locks his legs in. Nice long legs, locks in underneath. Full Mataleao, or the reverse naked choke. Locks in, just squeezes. And hangs on for the win. Round of applause, fighting out of the red corner, Dylan Clay. Ladies and gentlemen, Bryson Kamaka.
Out of the red corner, ladies and gentlemen, Joshua Ferreira. Wow, well, again, you're joining us. Uh, thank you very much for being here. Blaze Del Arena, Honolulu, Hawaii, X1 World Events, Battlegrounds 4. I mean, this fight, Joshua Ferreira, it's always, I feel not, okay, I feel bad. <laughs> I feel bad. I'm no, gonna this, say it. this guy can take but, some punishment. Yes. You know, we seen him last fight. Took and a lot of punishment, stuck it in there. I, but. I, I give this guy 100% of, of my respect. I mean, he's a new fighter, and he's just he's getting matched up with some great fighters. Yeah, Bryson coming in at six and nine, and this guy is like well, you know, talented. His, his stand up is so sharp and crisp. His ground is great. The problem is that you know he doesn't have the great. Oh, huge leg kick right there. Huge knee. Oh. oh. It gets stuck right there, and it gets knocked you know, out. I think I'm going to have to take that back. Yeah, I think I am going to have to take that back. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Just when you think that. I mean, that's Jason the, the catches beauty. Him. Okay, I'm, I, I don't know what to say. <laughs> I, we're I, actually, we're both in shock. <laughs> we we I actually mean, got sprayed from the corner. They are in shock as well. I, I. Unbelievable. Here comes Let's up. watch this again. Joshua Ferreira, new fighter. Huge leg kick there. Comes with the left hand. Tags him right on the button. Drops him. Finishes off with a kick. Unfortunately, that's a kind of illegal kick when your, your opponent is down. Let's let's take let's take a look at that. I'm I'm speechless. I, I just got through saying that this is a new fighter. He's always matched up against great fighters, but again, that is the that is the beauty or the nature of the fight. Little clinch here, exchange. Bryson comes out, tags him with a nice leg kick. Boom. Throws a huge oh, right hand over the top, right on the button, and drops unbelievable. him. Unbelievable! Look at that. Bryson wants to come back and he fight again. He wants to go, but that—that's the nature of the the fight. I mean, that's a clean knockout. It's a. I can't get any cleaner than that. That happens. And and I. We just got to form of the referee. That was a clean knockout, but what happened is, boom, huge knee. That right hand drops Bryson Kamaka right there. If he just stepped back, he would have won, but he kicks him in the head. Unfortunately, that's an illegal technique in every single organization in MMA. Another round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. The nature of mixed martial arts, you never know what's going to happen. Another round of applause. Great fights tonight. Unfortunately, things happen in mixed martial arts. We're gonna have to call that a disqualification with an illegal kick to the head while the fighter was down. Another round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. Fighting out of Bulls Pen, Mark Oshiro. From Team Devil's Pen, Tony Belvedere. Right now we have um, Un Mark Oshiro. Unbelievable, I'm, I'm still kind of speechless uh, as we move into this next fight. Tony Belvedere from um, Team Devil, Devil's Den. They call, him, they call him Hercules. He's actually fighting out of uh, Wisconsin. Nice single leg here. I'm sure doing a good job of getting his hips down, cross-facing. Trying to take a lot of power from that double leg. Trying to lock it in. Trying to net neck crank. Marco Schirro being one of the most exciting fighters here. Good job, Arshiro, keeping his base here. Keeping it under it, sprawling out. Nobody already bleeding from the nose from those shots from Marco Shiro. Good job by pummeling in. See if he can lock up a guillotine or he's going to keep his hands underneath. And these guys working hard already. Blood coming off of... Uh... Out of the nose. Nice guillotine right there. Nice. He's got a lock nice in. Nice <laughs> tight under it's the tight. chin. I, it looks, there he goes. Oh, oh. Is, I think he's out. I think he's out. A great guillotine. Sunk it in nice and deep. He doesn't know where he's at right here. Actually put him to sleep. Now for a lot of, a lot of uh, new people to mix martial arts, what happens when, you know, a lot of people think, okay, well, in a few minutes he's, he's up and he's, you know, maybe not aware. Yeah. Here's that guillotine right there, something nice and 
Osho is such a long guy. He has it nice and um, locked in there, raise, elevating that um, wrist. And what it is, is basically it stops the blood and oxygen to the brain, makes the guy pass out very, very safe. As long as the guy lets go, as soon as he realizes to pass out exactly what the um, Marcus Show did, you see all that, that distance and la range in there, locking up. Another round of applause. Stops the fight, and, and he's actually great out on his feet right there. Tonight. And you can see a little later, he kind of comes right to. By a guillotine, a round of applause, ladies and gentlemen, Mark Oshiro. The Filipino phenom, Eddie Yagen. From Young Guns, a round of applause for Ghana Hyatt. We have Eddie Yagen coming back in for the vacant super lightweight championship belt at 145 pounds. Versus Kana Hyatt of Young Guns Eluta from again the Big Island. And again, this is a big step in competition for Hyatt, who comes in with the 0-1 record against Yagen, who has a lot of uh, MMA experience as well as kickboxing experience. Spider's kind of measuring himself. And he's very, very powerful with his kicks here, but it looks like he has some great hands. Now, Eddie's last fight uh, recently, or? He fought in uh, March um, 18th against David Gonzalez. Uh, actually, Donald Gonzalez that we've seen tonight. Next Wars 2, won by TKO in round number 3. Now, of course, is this another, of course, Conor Hyatt coming in uh, fairly new? Yeah, definitely. Fairly new, but looks like he has solid hands, mm -hmm. so probably a kickboxing background, probably experienced, but maybe MMA, you know, fairly new to the MMA game. Oh, nice right hand, man. Oh, oh nice effect. <laughs> you gotta love Eddie's takedowns. Eddie's got always spectacular takedown. He will take you up off the ground. Really good strategy as well, because Kana Hyatt was pretty much tagging him standing up. He's got some blood already coming out of uh, the nose of Eddie. Oh, oh here's a he's little right. Ken <laughs> Rock right here. And locked it in. Let's uh, see if Eddie can get out. Wick. Oh, Eddie guts out of that one. Oh, nice. You gotta give it up for it. it Although his, although his record says he doesn't have a, a lot of experience record-wise, but obviously we can tell. Nowadays, you never know. Yep. It's like Eddie's got a cut above his eye or around I his eye or as well. I think it's out of the nose. It was that, that oh. left. It landed. Connor's doing a good job getting back to his feet. And he's got the body lock on him. Puts him down again. Still got that uh, overhook there. Not really a full guillotine, but... Just uh, still putting pressure on the on, on neck of Eddie. Yeah, make, it's kind of hindering his movement as well, so Eddie kind of has to stay in position because Hyatt's doing such a good job at kind of getting up and getting back to his feet where he's so dangerous and landed at landing. You know, that it's solid right hands and combinations there. Yeah, he probably wants to stay this, keep this fight to the ground where he's um, hopefully dominant. Kind of running out of time here. Again, scheduled for three three-minute rounds. Ooh, a lot of blood coming out of those of right here. And he finally gets his head out, but he's gonna run out of time. He's worked. Now he's there. He's comfortable. He's That's where he loves to be. And that's it. Uh, First round. Good job by Conor Hyatt. Keeping him nice and tight. Minimizes the damage that he took away. Even if he's on his, kinda, on his back, so. Kind of kind of worked a lot. Kind of worked a lot to uh, head that overhook on Eddie, so. Ooh, here's that left. The left hook landed from Conor Hyatt right there. Even if he had the underhook, and he's so dominant with that yes. double leg takedown. Scoop him up. Nice, huge double leg takedown there. Here it is again. A lot of power nice. when he comes through and finishes Technique strong. Technique and power. And he's very, very explosive. Of course, I believe I the blood coming out of the nose. In the nose, or on the nose. So kind of, kind of, up, yeah. I wonder if he broke his nose. You know, sometimes you see a little line on there, mm. but... Maybe such a dark dude that even if you uh, <laughs> yes. maybe can't see that line there, <laughs> and then the case of Claire Sander broken nose, but you kind of can see a little bit of swelling to start. Get it beautiful Ringo Get Tiffany. Get of course, you can hear the uh, corner of Kana Hyatt. Coach Wally, great stand up uh, coach. Make it work right now. Tell him to make it work. 
take this kid out. This is, he said his, this is his town. Let's take it away from him. Yep. And with those punches that he's landing, he's doing a great job. He can fight this fight, keep this fight standing. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a long time since Eddie's been dominated standing up, or at least he got you know, tagged as much as he has. I think, I mean, I noticed Eddie's nose, maybe, but it's getting, that, it's swelling up, you know that. Right above that nose, huh? Ooh, that's some great. Oh, no, right hand by Eddie. Right, right. Great exchanges. I don't know, maybe, maybe Eddie wants to keep it up. Oh, oh, huge, oh I think he found it again. Unbelievable. Oh, my oh. knee. Yes. <laughs> this is battleground. Pulls him down there. A great exchange of blows. Of course, uh, Eddie brings it back to. Uh, is Eddie most comfortable in the in the down position? I think he's comfortable. He's very very balanced as a fighter, mm -hmm. standing in on the ground. But he's good enough to realize that if he's not getting the best of the guy standing up, take He'll it to do. the ground, you know? Mm -hmm. he's, so, he's dominant as well on the ground. Great exchanges and raining down on their elbows, connecting. Of course, kind of doing a great job. Covering up oh. there. Oh, kick in the face. And he passes. And he his back right here. Great movement on both fighters. I mean, trying to... Jockey for position. He's got uh, side. Trying to rain down on the elbows. Eddie aggressive with the elbows, but Hayo's doing a good job at defending yep. and keeping those arms up, those forms up. So not a lot of clean shots are landing. Ooh, back of the head. Oh. See if he can finish it. Just raining. He's really got side him up. Yeah, that's that it. Thing. That's how it goes. Now, what does a referee look for something like? I mean, a lot of times he just may look like he was, is it not defending himself? Yes, yeah, not intelligently defending himself. If he's just kind of covering up, taking damage, the referee's job is to step in there, stop the fighter and taking damage. You know, we'll see it right here again. Huge knee to the body shot right there as they, they land. And Eddie is a lot more successful in this third, in his second round of fighting, kind of bulls him, takes him down here. Here's again where he starts throwing those elbows. But like, Connor's doing a good job at keeping defense. Those hands are getting in. Nice little kick to the face by Hyde as well. Stack pass. Ladies and gentlemen, another Comes great fight finish. tonight. You can see. Battlegrounds four. These guys. Not defending himself. This is what mixed martial arts is all about. Ladies and gentlemen, fighting out of the blue corner, the Filipino phenom, Eddie Yagen. Of course, we'd like to welcome you guys to X1 World Events. A lot of great fights going on, and I know a lot of you were here to see uh, a lot of different fights. Our main event of the night, Tiger Marcelo. Ladies and gentlemen, sad for me to say, but things happen in mixed martial arts and practice and elsewhere. He did not pass his medical due to a broken uh, hand, so Tiger Marcelo will not be fighting tonight. Will not be fighting tonight. Sometimes it happens, it's the nature of the fight, but I know his opponent, Trevor, man, he came tonight in his corner tonight, my friends. Phil Baroni was here, and these guys were so pumped to take on Tiger. I mean, what do you, what do you guys think? We gotta get, I mean, Tiger Marcello take it on Trevor. Trevor flew out all the way over here. Ladies and gentlemen, look, I just gotta have to take a step back. I'll just give you the mic. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the ring. He was going to corner Trevor tonight. Phil Baroni. What's up, guys? Hey, uh, I'm real sorry about tonight, you know. We came here to fight. Trevor was in great shape. We wanted to put on a great show. I'm just hanging out, kicking back, enjoying the uh, Hawaiian cigarettes and uh, hanging out with you guys. Thanks for having me. Hey, I'm also looking to fight this dude, uh, Ruthless Robby Lola. I heard he's been coming out here and beating up some Hawaiians. Well, uh, I'm gonna fight him real soon here in Hawaii and knock his ass out. All right, guys. Thanks. What, Tre Trevor, you've been training with Trevor for a while. I mean, now Tiger's not fighting. What, I mean, what, what's, you guys gonna come back? You guys gonna do it again? You guys gonna wait? Uh, I don't know if Tiger lost his stripes or what, what happened with that cat. But, uh, you know, we were here to fight. If he shows up, we'll fight him right now, so. I, I don't know what the deal is with that guy. He might have got vaginitis over there in Brazil or, or, or something. I mean, I don't know. But uh, who are we here to fight? We're sorry, guys. You guys got to give it up, man. Marcelo Tiger not doing it. 
Let's bring, let's bring him out. His opponent, ladies and gentlemen, Trevor. I mean, this guy's been training for a while, cornered by Phil Baroni. Give him a round of applause for being here. I'm gonna find out, man, I mean, it's always disheartening. You, you train and you train and you train and you get to the final and you know, and your opponent just doesn't want to do it. You know, that's, that's what they say, medical reasons. What's on your mind, man? I'm just disappointed, man. I came out here, I wanted to give you guys a show, you know. Um, I know you guys paid money to see us fight, and unfortunately it didn't work out, you know. Very disappointed, sure you guys are too. So, so if he comes back, uh, you know, maybe he comes now, or you guys come back to Hawaii, you want to still fight him? Of course, of course, I'm ready to fight, you know, that's what I came here for, it's what I trained for, it's my job. I'm ready to give you guys a good show, uh, anytime, anywhere, let's do it. So maybe, maybe speculation, what do you think, you think it's a broken hand, or maybe he just doesn't want to do it? I don't know. Broken hand, broke back mountain. I don't know what happened to the guy, you know. Don't know. You heard it. I mean, he's ready to do it. Marcelo Tiger, according to uh, medical staff, he's got a broken hand. And uh, if you guys want to see this happen, you guys got to make some noise, man. You guys got to hype up this. That's what you say. Another round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. Trevor, all the way to here fight, to fight Marcelo. Thanks a lot for being here. You know, we hope it happens. We hope it happens. Give him a round of applause, ladies and gentlemen, true sportsmen. Ladies and gentlemen, Mark El Toro Moreno, John Garrity. Next one, welterweight championship ball, Mark Moreno, the Bulls panel, one of the heaviest hitters in MMA. It's Johnny Garrity from uh, Freestyle Academy. And Johnny coming in with a three, four and one record. Mark El Toro Moreno comes in with 10, 6, and 2. Coming up a two-fight win streak versus Tyson. Philemon Noho'o Ikaika and Ross the Boss Ibanez. Should be a great fight. I mean, this brings us to our final fight of the evening. If you were joining us, thank you very much for being here. We are uh, coming at you. The Blaisdell Arena right here in Honolulu, Hawaii. Downtown Honolulu. Final fight of X1 World Events Battlegrounds 4. My name is McKinney alongside uh, Mike Anzuka. He actually won and lost his last two fights by KO. So, you know, obviously it looks like he has some power, but he also has affinity possibly to get knocked out. And if there's somebody going to knock him out, Mark Reynolds throws some heavy bombs at both hands. And of course, it's always it's always the uh, right followed up with Mark Reynolds' leg that. Uh... Nice leg kicks the start here. Ooh, nice return left kick there. Almost a running man punch. Again, scheduled for three three-minute rounds. Both fighters kind of feel themselves out right now, catching the distance. Ooh. Oh, that's a Mark Moreno kick. That was blocked, but I'm sure it still it's, hurt the it's, forearm, yeah. man. It's got, it's got a, it's got a weaken the whole entire arm. Of course, I, I watched Mark's last fight. I mean, his kicks and his, his follow-up at the right. Again, it's always a, it's, it's always a thing when you're watching a lot of experienced fighters. You know, not a lot of action in the beginning. Just kind of feel each other out, as opposed to you go back to our first preliminary round. These guys just go at it. Yeah, they just went balls off. Head to head, like two rounds. And, and it's, it's, oh! oh it's it's a knockout! One punch out of nowhere. Unbelievable. I am just. I, that was a sec, the second greatest of the night. I mean, just. That is a legitimate one punch knockout. Here now, you and I are sitting here tr trying to think of what to say. Trying to, these guys are feeling each other out. Mark Moreno comes with it. I mean, straight down the pike. I, mean, I don't even think he fully extended. <laughs> yeah, I don't think so. Either. But he landed, he put his body into it. Mark is such a powerful puncher. Looks like he clawed him square. He's still kind of like, doesn't even know where he is These, right now. This X1 Battlegrounds 4 has, has unbelievable Ooh. fights. I mean, you've seen it. Mark Moreno. Let's take it back. There it is. Mark's measuring, boom, <laughs> drops that hand, straight right, drops him like a of, bad habit. Of course, a, right little, a little help from himself in walking Ooh. into it. Mark dropped the head oh. and boom! Oh. 
Uh, right in line with that overhand right. And, and sometimes, you know, guys like his, I mean, you look at him and his, his neck, John's neck is so huge. Oh. Not even a snapback, so he took the full brunt oh, yeah. of that. Coming forward to oh. him. Bing. No give on the neck. No. That tells you how strong that guy's neck is. John's neck is incredibly strong. Because when you hit like that, you usually hear it, you see the neck slap back. He even kept on moving forward because his momentum was going forward. Even though I didn't really know where he was. The nature of oh, the Connor game. Oh, right in his eye. Look at that. You uh, see the swelling of that eye. Just, you, we're sitting here. We're oh. thinking, okay, we, we're, we're explaining what's going on. And, and, and out of nowhere. Unbelievable. Right Checking him out. Look at the eye. Ooh. Get a shot of that eye. Just, it's. Oh, look at that. Uh, unbelievable. That's, That's the kind of ego I say. <laughs> cut me, Rock. Please <laughs> cut me. That, uh, I, I, I'm th exactly. I'm thinking Rocky. <laughs> Yikes. I, I, he just needs to yell out Adrian right now. Yeah. Let's take a look at that again. Mark drops it. Drops that head, comes straight over to Pike as a good counter. Oh, Bing. Unbelievable. Oh, that's the kind of like punch that breaks your <laughs> yes. hand, you know? That, that's it breaks your hand and that's and that's the punch that you will feel yep. for a month from now. Here's that I told you so, man. You're gonna go back to the gym and you're gonna practice and you're gonna flinch it every time somebody throws that oh, overhead. Goodness. Again, X1 Battlegrounds right here in Honolulu, Hawaii. Some great, great fights tonight. Uh, we got to give it up for X1 World Event staff. I mean, these guys uh, putting together a great fight card. And uh, we can still see it. Our, our medics working on uh, John Garrity. We got all three doctors in the ring right now. And this is up. Again, so uh, thank you very much for joining us. X1 World Events Battlegrounds 4. Uh, on behalf of myself, uh, Mike uh, McCutty, and Mike Anzuka. Mike, thank you very much. Great night of fights, exciting, a lot Always. of controversy, great knockout submissions. We've seen it all tonight. Stick around for the next uh, great eight X1 fights. Again, Mike, thanks. Always a pleasure working with you. Uh, from Honolulu, Hawaii, we say aloha and mahalo.